Um, anyway, so today, let me share the screen actually. Today we're talking about the group Little Big. Little Big doing in a lecture series about internet memes. Uh, because after all, they are not technically internet memes. I have to admit, I did not think of this on my own. Uh, thanks to Nancy Condi, who could not be with us today because she was in defense, but, um, but sent, on her, sent on her regards. And I'm ashamed to say that knowledge of a little buzz is rather limited. I knew um, Skibbity, which we're going to get to in a bit, and a couple of others. Um, and this has to relate to my dirty secret as a so-called um, pop culture expert for Russia, which really suck at the music part. Um, when I was working on my second book, Overkill, um, I kept thinking that I was going to have to include um, pop music because it's a huge part of the culture, but I bring myself to do it um, because I did it so much. Um, and unlike the uh, movies and books that I hated, these things had a mimetic power. They're going to get stuck in my head as earworms, and I did not want to have a na-na song um, playing around in my head all day. Um, so I ended up not doing anything with virtually nothing really with a uh, pop when I started working on um, on mass culture. Now I loved underground um, Soviet rock, of course, but I, everything that came out in the 1990s. Um, the aesthetic, I, I remember I, when I was um, working in Moscow and uh, um, writing my dissertation, I'd wake up and on um, the equivalent of MTV, there was, or just really just television, loop of music videos. There's always the same music videos from 6.40 to 7 a.m. every day, so I got them memorized. And one of them was called Pop Show, um, which was just this, everything about it was just so ridiculously over the top. I'm reminded of um, my favorite review the show when the film Moulin Rouge came out. Um, the aesthetic as having all the restraint, restraint of Liberace um, running loose in an Indian restaurant. Um, and that was really um, the aesthetic of, um, of this music. And it wasn't until Zimfira um, came out with her first album that, that I felt such a fresh of breath air. It was the first post-Soviet pop that I actually liked and listened to for fun and still listen to. I didn't get, really get into Nautilus, though I do love Smooth Lovely Galicinatsi, even though I got to them um, long after um, the, sec the Brat movies. And Leningrad is always the exception to all of this. And then there's Little Big. I just went down a very deep Little Big rabbit hole, thanks to, to Nancy. And I may never get out of this particular rabbit hole, which is fine with me because um, they're so much fun. Uh, Little Big was founded in 2013, and they're at least as popular for the videos as they are for the music. And now they um, were the pick for, two, for uh, Russia's, 2000, uh, Russia's entry into the 2020 Eurovision contest, um, we, uh, though they ran into two, um, two hitches, one little, one big. The little hitch was um, a, uh, another sort of viral video coming out showing um, the frontman Ilyich's um, homophobe at a gay pride parade in Europe, but since this is Russia, that was only a minor glitch. Um, but the bigger one is, of course, COVID-19 and the cancellation of, um, of Eurovision and the um, transformation of it into just sort of a televised, um, televised show. So what, so the music is that they call it um, freak rave. It has elements of, sometimes elements of hip hop at, at the EDM. Um, the videos themselves uh, can be considered viral if they're very successful. But, uh, but on the other hand, a slickly produced professional video is in my mind, a video that is popular and becomes viral, but not necessarily the first thing we think of when we think of a viral video. A viral video usually is more homemade and um, like the, the, the initial big ones on YouTube, like Charlie Bit My Finger and stuff like that. Um, but as I took the Nancy Condi challenge, um, I asked myself what the, the group's relation to memes and virality might be. What does Little Big tell us about issues that um, I've been bringing up over the past several lectures? Um, if Little Big is implicated in themes, then that gives us one set of conclusions. But I'd also like to think um, along the lines of um, how lab scientists works, and I, I usually don't, because my methods such as they are, have nothing in common with them. Um, but if Little Big is not really a meme-related phenomenon, but is meme-adjacent, what does that tell us? That is, lab scientists know that um, a negative result is still a result. So if this, this isn't, if they're not, um, that still can be something we learn from. Um, and surely it can tell us something about the whole question of internet memes relationship to, um, to IRL, to the real life, or generally to non-internet life. Um, because as I keep coming back to, um, I find the divide between the internet and, the, and real life um, lo more and more of a fanciful um, illusionary distinction, certainly one that seems more illusionary right now, um, that seems to assume that people live in one mode and then live in the other mode and there isn't much spillover. Little Big functions precisely on that spillover between online and offline life.
So we'll start with the most obvious connection um, to Virat, and that is Skibbity. Um, this is the video that brought them their widest fame. So today I'm actually going to show you some videos. Um, and the first one I'll show you, I think many of you know it, um, is the original uh, video um, of the Skibbity dance that uh, became such a hit. I'm not going to go to full screen because that uh, was a bit of a problem last time. So this will take about three minutes and let's watch it. I don't know, I'm assuming a bunch of you have seen this, so some of you are seeing it for the first time, and I can't see your faces right now, but I'm also assuming, or at least hoping, that at least at some point you cracked a smile seeing all of this. Um, so what can we say about this particular video? The first is I almost total lack of meaning or, or, or obvious content, um, but still, um, it's a very stylized image of a very obviously um, post-Soviet uh, type. Everything so we have the drinking of the, buying the vodka, drinking vodka and spilling all over the place. And that everything ends up looking like a gang fight almost inevitably. This, by the way, is our first example of the kind of weaponization of dance. We'll get back to that with um, with a uh, little big in some later videos. Um, but it's also mimetic in the example that it sets. Um, so certain aspects of it um, look ready-made to be internet memes, or, or maybe they are internet memes I haven't just haven't seen, like the uh, girls dancing with the cats. Um, at the end, the dancing skyscrapers and Godzilla you not love that. Um, it um, is totally nonsensical, but one could imagine one could imagine that erupting sort of spontaneously. This did not actually do that. This was very, very intentional. Um, this is also something that is online. This is um, very online, but 
but in a sense pretending to be offline because of course everything it's showing is taking place in a store and um, a bedroom and on the street. Um, and also um, mimetic in both spellings of the word and that it's showing you how you can be like them offline as well. You can learn that dance, hence the skibbity challenge. And this is how um, Little Big uh, got um, its largest audience with this, with this video and then with the call to people to do the skibbity challenge, that is to record themselves doing the skibbity dance, put it online and share it. Um, and this was huge. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of it because God help us if we have to watch too much skibbity, but just to give you a sense of what people are doing here. You get the idea more of this online. Um, but the fact that everybody's doing this dance um, shows a few things. Um, one, um, and we have to think about what makes it catchy, of course, is the beats. Um, there's the, the traveling movement, which is so incredibly doofy looking, but really easy to do. Um, some of these videos have great moments of people trying to brush their teeth as they're moving their arms back and forth, or trying to eat and food is flying everywhere. A mother trying to feed her babies while she's just shoving the spoon everywhere because her arms keep going this way. Um, but one obvious comparison in terms of, um, around, you know, this came out in 2018, a few years earlier, would be Gangnam Style, um, which was such a hit as both the video and then, of course, as everybody doing the moves. Um, but there is a one difference, um, that Gangnam Style, you really only had to learn to do like three or four things in a row, and then you had it. Basically, you had to, to move back and forth and do the, um, the rodeo swing thing, and, and, um, and that was about it. Um, this is, the thing about this one is that it's both really easy and complex. That is, there's not a single thing you have to do in this dance that on its own is hard to do. The challenge is remembering them all in sequence. Um, so it takes some effort, but it's also completely doable. Um, in any case, so they, they, though they perform Skibbity live in concert, I think they still do, I think they have no choice really to perform Skibbity live in concert. Um, this whole thing is done with the internet in mind to affect offline behavior and have it brought then back onto the online world in the form of these videos. So Skibbity was the biggest uh, Russian clip ever from Click Clack, which is one of the huge portals that I'll be getting back to. Um, it, led to um, it led to parodies, it also was of its own um, I'm going to very quickly show you some, a, some compil compilation of some memes, if we can stand it. Otherwise, I'll just show you a few more. I'll show you um, a, few, a few memes made, from, made about Skibbity summoning or summoning um, not. Um, this one, when it was too strong. What if I told you? All right. Um, this one, the distracted boyfriend meme in Russian, it says me, Despacito, and Skibbity. So uh, basically about which viral song is replacing the other viral song. Um, and here's a goose just singing Skibbity, yapapa. Um, then uh, in that looks like, I believe, Cyanide and Happiness. Um, does your dog bite? No, um, she does something even more painful. Skibbity, papa, bitch. Um, then this one, where did you study at the um, Technical Institute? What do you know how to do? Skibbity bapa. Um, and hey to get and he's thinking to himself, skibbity bapa. Um, listen, did you fuck my mama? Sort of. And they get angry and just skibbity bapa. So it becomes this kind of ridiculous response to anything. Um, this is my classmates and um, phys ed. Um, it goes on and on. They're not particularly great, but they're um, they're there. Um, so let's step back. Um, and think about where this came from. I want to give you some background on, um, on Little Big, because it turns out Little Big is, is bigger than Little Big. 
um, as someone who's been consuming uh, Russian internet content casually, I hadn't realized how much of it actually revolved around one person, Ilya Pruskin, um, who is the um, front man, this is him, for a little big, um, and is usually referred to as Ilyich. Born in 1985, which is easy to remember because he has a tattoo of it on his torso, as if he's like expecting to be acting in memento, and the first thing he needs to know is the year he's born in. But he's born in 1985, um, in what is now Zabaykalski Krai, they moved to Petersburg, um, and early on he was a champion at Kevoyen. Um, Kevoyen, uh, most of you know, I think, um, is hugely important. Kevoyen was um, the a big forum for, for a combination of kind of improv, variety, sketch comedy. Imagine Second City, but in every city, and usually with less talent. Um, it's also kind of like a cross between quiz bowl and talent shows. Kevoyen feeds into all the big ones. Kevo N as this kind of um, variety, semi-curated, but semi-anything-goes format um, is really ready-made for people to take the leap from that to, um, to, um, to uh, YouTube-type content. Um, so in 2003, Ilich was in a new metal group called um, Tencore and a few other groups. And then in 2011, um, when Yuri um, from My Duck's Vision founded the now notorious studio Spasiba Yeva, thank you, Eve. Um, Ilyich was part of it. Now, thank you, it was extremely popular, had all sorts of video bloggers and all sorts of really interesting content, but then a scandal broke and it turned out that it was all financed by the Kremlin. Um, and the various people, so most of the people involved in it said, including, had no idea it was financed by the Kremlin and they wouldn't have been involved in it. Dikhtaryov says, oh yeah, they didn't know, we all knew. So um, believe, believe whom you will. Um, but Ilyich did manage to emerge from this without any particular um, problems. Um, and part of that might be because of the, um, how fondly people felt about his work on Spasiba Yeva. It was um, very uh, sort of cutting edge content. Um, he, he in particular, Guffy Guff Show, um, which was kind of like a Sesame Street parody with foul language and drug humor. This is from the first episode where he's teaching the puppet that H is for hashish. Um, don't get, get caught or Uncle Militia Man will get you and you're going to have to grease a lot of palms to get out of prison. Um, a lot of stuff for, uh, for Spasiba Yeva. Um, and in 2013, founded um, the YouTube channel that um, eventually led to, um, to Little um, Click. a number of different channels to it. Um, it's still around. There's um, Tresh Loto, Trash Law. Um, there's Lashkwarni Historia, Trashy Stories. Um, and click clack show and so on and so forth. Lots of fun stuff you're interested in, in, in looking at it. Um, now, Little Big um, started out uh, partly related to Spasiba Yeva, uh, that apparently they wanted to do um, a, an April Fool's um, video. So their first video was made for that. And then um, somehow, supposedly, um, someone heard about them and asked if they wanted to, do, to be the warm up act for the Antwoord, the South African. Um, group to which they're um, compared to uh, very often. They said, sure, so you have a month. So they had um, one month to, um, to uh, work up all this material. Um, so they became the group called Little Big um, in two th with their first uh, video in 2013 called Every Day I'm Drinking. Um, I'm assuming it's called Little Big um, because of the contrast between um, Ilich and uh, Olympia Idrova and Liliana um, uh, Ilyana Kast, uh, the two uh, little people who were initially in the group, um, and not because of the uh, one of the best fantasy novels ever written by John Crowley. Um, but if we go back to their first video, we see how much they rely on mimetic content. It might not be internet mimetic content, but it's definitely mimetic content. This video made quite a splash. A lot of people were offended by it. A lot of people loved it. Um, and without further ado, here is Every Day I'm Drinking. And by the way, it, like just about every one of their songs is in English. We'll talk about that too in a minute. Hey, 
One question that you might ask is, who is this for? Who is the intended, intended audience? Because it's all in English. Um, but actually, it was um, really very uh, widely uh, viewed in Russia. Um, and of course, what they're dealing with as the subject of this entire video is Russia. But they're using pretty much every visual cliche they could possibly have um, for showing Russia. It was 2013, so they have the um, Pussy Riot bakal, um, bakal, uh, Bakalava, but, um, Balaklava. But otherwise, we have the, the usual suspects, the dancing bear, the, um, the vodka, um, a, nice, a nice little um, color arrangement that you actually have the same color for the Gorknik tracksuit and for the Sarafan and, Kok and Kokoshnik that the uh, two uh, sh little women are, are, are wearing. Um, and the line that they keep coming back to, this is Russia, bitch, which sounds like it should already have been a meme on its own. Um, but apparently was not, it, or not exactly. Um, I'll get to it in a second. Um, but what we have is something that is so invested in um, dealing with um, Russia's image um, and could and was accused by some of the people who watched as, um, as trashing Russia. But um, arguably, and I think this is convincing, especially if you watch their other stuff, um, it's so um, self-aware um, and so ironic that they're um, making fun of these cliches, even as they're invoking them. It's hard to take them seriously saying that, that even as they're saying this is Russia, it's hard to take seriously that they're saying that this is all that, that there is to Russia. Um, so that this is Russia bitch thing actually has a, either started around then or had a, it shouldn't have a life of its own by now. Um, I believe this all goes back to this is Sparta, um, which became the, you know, from um, 300, which, be, which became um, its own meme template. So we have this is Russia, um, this is Russia, bitch, and then the face here. Um, fuck that bitch, this is Russia. Caution, this is Russia, because what we're getting to actually is um, where um, Russian, we're about to get to where Russian language memes about how cra supposedly crazy Russia is um, overlaps with those English language memes that I alluded to earlier in the series, the meanwhile in Russia memes that, that are either um, making fun of or taking pride in how crazy things get in Russia. Um, but it's not meanwhile in Russia, it's phrased a bit differently. So here's Medvedev. This is Russia, relax. Um, you'll, see, you'll, see you'll see stranger things than this here. Um, or um, it's okay, this is Russia. So this is Russia um, is kind of the equivalent of meanwhile in Russia for, um, for this exaggeration of, of Russian stereotypes. Um, or this is, because uh, this is Russia, baby. Um, uh, uh, doing the same sort of thing here, here. This is Russia baby with this plane out here. Um, and I think the addition of bitch um, has plenty of uh, possible sources, including actually Breaking Bad with, uh, of course, with Aaron Paul's character saying bitch all the time and Breaking Bad was rather huge in some Russian circles. And we're actually gonna see reference to Breaking Bad in one of their, um, one of their later videos. Um, they, in fact, a lot of their videos of the, of the first several years um, continue to play with this whole question of Russian stereotypes. Um, and the follow-up to that, I would say, um, would be from 2015, a video called Give Me Your Money, which they do together with Tommy Cash. Now, Tommy Cash, despite the name, is an Estonian um, performer um, who uh, does work that is uh, very simpatico with what Little Big does. And he's played in a number of Little Big videos, including this um, web series they have that's supposedly about um, losers in Brighton Beach trying to commit crimes. 
Um, I highly recommend that if you are looking for little big content. Um, and so let's take a quick look at this one. Yeah. Hello, Tommy Cash. We want to invite you to Russia. I'm coming. Hey, Tommy. Hey, man. <laughs> What's good, bro? Hello, my brother. Okay. I heard it's dangerous in Russia, so I took a gun, man. This is gun? I had this gun when I was a baby. Look at my gun. Your gun looks too little, man. Shut the fuck up. And let me show you Russia. You will miss things.
Да, гостя встретили, показали ему все, что нужно. Я его еще раз Да, Эстония нас будет бояться. До свидания. Hello, Eminem. We wanna invite you to Russia. That's the uh, mini series, the web series we're talking about. So, um, the aesthetic here um, is so much one of excess, but it's kind of meta excess, right? Because um, everything about this is excessive, but part of the excess is playing with the notion that everything but Russia is so excessive. Um, down to the, the point that I think is worth making, which is that you have not just the Estonian, but also each, all the Russians, when they're speaking English, they're speaking fake Russian accents. They're not speaking with their own accents. They're speaking with the Russian accents you might hear in an American movie, an American TV show, where everything is so exaggerated and you know that someone who's from Russia, you can recognize it as supposed to be a Russian accent, it's close, but it's not um, an authentic Russian accent. So you have people who authentically speak Russian, Tommy Cash included, um, who are um, making their English sound the way that we, might think that Russian English is supposed to sound this really overemphasis of the, of the R's and so on and so forth. And then of course, everything is about guns, the size of the guns, the money, the rolling out of the money. And the, the, um, the excess I think is really embodied quite literally in the, in the large women who are involved there as a kind of contrast, of course, to the, to the, to the little women. Um, that um, what we have here is an, is an example, I think, of the humorous style, the humorous mode known as, known as Stiop, where, you over, where you're over identifying with the subject that you're making fun of. Um, so the, the way, and here the way to, um, to parody um, received notions of what Russia is like is uh, to go all in for them and to make them as extremely over the top as possible um, and to have as much fun with them as possible. Um, so that is really what this, uh, what this video does. Um, now, also, of course, it's over the top with sex, um, the orgies, the twerking, all of that, um, which, again, fits in, I think, with the notion of Russia that um, Russia that is being portrayed abroad, that Russia sometimes is helping, is helping to export. Um, so this period of Little Big through 2018, when um, Olympia Ivyva, the, the um, main short woman, uh, the one who was in this video as well as the first one, um, finally uh, eventually leaves, um, this is... I would distinguish this period from a um, more recent Little Big. This is when um, I would say that their, um, their satire, their stilp um, were quite obvious and in, in some sense political um, and, and very, very pointed. Um, and now they seem to have shifted, but I don't know if, if it is necessarily because Olympia has left. Olympia left, interesting enough, because um, she got tired of touring all the time and wanted to devote herself to businesses uh, making lingerie and peanut butter, which I hope are two distinct businesses because it's hard to imagine them successfully together. Um, and so she's been replaced by, um, by the singer that you saw in um, Skibidi, um, who is uh, most associated with the band Lingrad. Um, so since some more recently, um, and this actually starts to think even before Olympia leaves, um, that their, their, their videos, despite the fact that they continue to use English, um, their, their biggest hits have, around the world have had less and less verbal content. Like um, the wonderful video that I highly recommend um, about um, Kim Jong-un called Lolly Bomb, in which Kim Jong-un falls in love with a bomb and has sex with it. Um, there are practically no words to it. Um, but all of this also helps explain how you get from this deliberately vulgar, um, deliberately offensive content um, for this group that was at times controversial to them becoming Russia's selection for Eurovision. Um, in 2012, 2000, in 2013, 2014, I think that would have seemed like an impossibility. Um, so the, the thing to do though, is to look at what they're doing with this album that came out, um, that came out for Eurovision with um, the, the two big songs from it that I want to look at because um, the, there's a continuity of aesthetic here, but there's also something a bit different going on and something that is, on the surface simpler, but I'm hoping might be more complex. So I want to show you now um, their entry for um, Eurovision. It's called Uno. Some of you may have seen it. Mm -hmm. 
So compared to the other um, videos we've seen, this is a really stripped down video. It's all taking place on, on one, in one spot, all on stage. Um, it doesn't require nearly sort of um, complicated editing that we've seen before. Um, and um, the lyrics are really quite uh, basic and stripped down. I'd say it hints at some dramas of substitution here. Um, uh, the old littles are gone, so they have a, a new little person there to dance. Um, and now they've gone from a kind of basic English to an even more basic Spanish. Um, it almost reminds me of um, the Guffy Guff days of Ilich when he was doing his fake Sesame Street stuff, like Sesame Street counting in Spanish. Um, that's what they're doing this whole time is counting in Spanish. So where the hell did Teres go? They, seem to, they always seem to skip that number. So it wouldn't be necessarily that good of a teaching tool. Um, the simplicity is also emphasized in the moment when you see the guy at the keyboard who's just playing with one finger on the, um, on the same key again and again and again. And even the, the dancing is fun, but it's not the twerking from the last video we saw. There's not really any jumping around. It's just um, those wonderfully designed bell, bell bottoms and the um, movement back and forth of the legs. Um, and one of the things that I think going, is going on here is a different kind of stilt. That is, they've arrived as this big name band. They've been accepted enough by um, official Russia that they are the Eurovision choice. So what they've given us is like the complete Eurovision package. This is the most Eurovision song they could do. Um, a, a parody of that sort of performance would be ugly faux 70s fashion, the really um, basic language. Now they're not pretending to be our image of what Russians are. They're pretending to be someone's images of, of what um, Spanish speakers are. But really what they're doing, if you look at how they're dressed and how they're acting is 
they're kind of through this um, still through this over identification. What they're giving us is this kind of ironic postmodern ABBA for Eurovision. ABBA being the classic Eurovision success. Um, Uno is sort of the Little Big's Waterloo, um, and so rather than you know rather than try to expand the expectations or the form of Eurovision um, by doing something obviously challenging, I think they're challenging something by doing something so obvious and so um, so stripped down. That, um, but only if you know the other things that they've done does it seem that they're actually would it seem like they're actually playing a game. But what the game really is, I think, is shown by the final video that I want to show you. I promise this is the last video, and then after that, two minutes, and we'll be done. Um, which is the song "Hypno Dancer," which, by the way, makes us think of the word "uno" a little bit. Uh, it's it's connotation a little bit differently here. Um, by the way, um, was it Kolb? Um, I think David Brandenburg is the which I Kolb is the um, Russian uh, equivalent to to Vine, but it has one advantage over Vine in that it still exists. Um, and the way that uh, Urban Dictionary defines Kobe, it says it's adored by, Russians, adored by Russian school kids who like to loop stupid music to even stupid videos and call it a meme. Uh, but there's been a lot of stuff on Kobe from this particular video, which I will now show you, um, Hypno Dancer, um, that you can see was made, it's part of the same cycle as Uno, you can see by, um, by the people in it and how they dressed them, the Uno references.
Spencer! Hey. That last is an example of the exaggerated Russian accent I was talking about. Okay, so on one level, this might be the stupidest video I've ever seen, I'm not sure. Um, on the other hand, um, it is doing something. I like the changes in costume, which change nothing, tearing off one dress to have another, covering up one mustache, fake mustache with another fake mustache, and emphasis on style over substance. I think this video is very much about this group. Um, they, hypnot they hypnotized us with their hips and skibbity. Um, they demanded that we give them their money. And now they're doing it all together in this um, enterprise. Um, it's... Uh, it's about us. It's about viral content's power over us. And it's also just uh, as stripped down as it gets. I'm going to dance in front of you. You're going to give me all your money. Um, I'm just basically making you stare at me. Um, and while, while, I'm staring at, while you're staring at me, I can do whatever I want. It's, um, in a way, it's a kind of declaration of, of, a, of a almost insidious intent. Um, it also takes place in what I think is typical for them in this weird quasi-Russia, quasi-America, where um, the cops are American. Um, the people sitting on the table look Russian. One of them is um, Pravda, but the sign up there is in English. Um, so the whole world is, you know, to use Thomas Friedman's horrible um, uh, phrasing, flat for them. Um, it's all open to them, and it's all a stage in which they can dance and hypnotize us with their dancing um, and um, take over our brains, basically, which is one way of looking at what memetics is all about. And one of the, I think, let more troubling um, metaphor is behind memes, not internet memes, but memes in general, that gives us the whole notion of virality and viral video is that memes are a virus. Memes are something that come in and, and colonize our brain. Well, our brain already has memes, but there are think, um, outside influences that can come in like some song that you can't get out of your head. I dare you to get hypnodance out of your head now. Um, they take over and they've got you. So what do we get from all of this? Um, we get this, uh, this wonderful flattening of the differences between Russia and the world, singing in English, but addressing both, both audiences. Um, this, uh, initially, this playing with Russian stereotypes, um, which I think is different when Russians are doing it as opposed to when non-Russians are doing it. They, um, they know exactly what they're doing. Um, they're playing not just with the Gopniki and the bears, but also those fake Russian accents. So the very fact of having them get up there and put on fake Russian accents for everybody, um, I think, is a signal about what, what they're doing. We also can think about the connection between internet memes and memes in general. Um, this is entertainment that's meant to go viral. Um, it's playing with, um, with memes that circulate throughout, our, throughout the culture, like memes about Russia, not internet memes about Russia, but then by being distributed over the internet, then results at times in actual internet memes and in viral video. Um, also, more about the connection between the online and the offline. Um, as with Skibbity, it's a matter of getting people to imitate what they're doing. That is, in a sense, um, me, it's like memes, but it's also like prions, um, the, the uh, quasi-viral type things that, that make cells uh, do exactly what they've been doing. Um, and also it's bringing online stuff that presumably each and others learned from their Kevin days. And all of this is part of this total media ecosystem, um, from Spasiba Yeva to Click Clack, um, to the organization of all the various acts um, and their, their tours and so on and so forth. Um, but internet viral fame um, drives everything here. Um, and then it all comes together by being picked up by Eurovision, Eurovision of all things, the campiest pop out there, um, English language mu music for, um, for largely non-English uh, speaking countries um, where the bands hope to conquer their world through, through um, coming up with a, with a, um, a catchy hit. Um, and most ironic, of course, is that they're finally going to be in Eurovision um, in the great campiest thing of all, which is, of course, a live um, event in the real world, but it's not going to happen in the real world because of COVID-19, so they're left being, again, only on the internet. But altogether, I would say that what's great about a little big in general, but also about the relationship to, um, to memes and the internet, is that I would see the, the combination of, um, of choreography, of dancing, of, um, of editing, um, of internet memes, of, of viral channels. Uh, of, well, because of different chemicals, I guess. Of viral challenges um, is that Little Big is kind of a, a memetic, it's memetic internet culture as Gesamtkunstwerk, the idea of like the total art altogether. I will stop. Thank you. And I will stop sharing. All right. Uh, and I'm going to open up the chat. So if people have any questions um, or they want to raise their hand, go right ahead. Oh, great. Okay. We have a question from Tanya. Uh, thank you, Elliot. One feature I noticed in these examples is Little Big's continuous investment 
in the idea of the fat comic body, which to an extent even makes the gender dimension irrelevant. I'm wondering what you make of it, considering how important embodiment is for a performance generally and for the genre of the mimetic dance in Little Big's case specifically. Why do they rely on the presence of the fat comic body? Mm -hmm. Excellent question. I think there are a few things. One, you know, one aesthetic influence on them that I didn't mention, but I think is there is Fellini, um, that uh, the sort of Fellini-esque orgies, which um, often involve unruly bodies, right? Um, and fat bodies are, are great unruly bodies because um, in a sense, it's kind of like the disabled body in, in, the, in that it's not um, conforming to, um, to general norms. We haven't even talked about the, the little people here, um, but the fat body is one of such incredible excess and so traditionally trope for comedy, even going back to Rabelais. Um, so I think they're dealing with something received there, um, but also, um, yeah, I, I think it is large. It is it is really largely about excess and about. I think the combination of the fat body with the beautiful thin body um, is is supposed to be a kind of funny perversion, right? Because you can't possibly. And I'm not speaking for myself, but um, the idea is you can't possibly legitimately just be in love with this fat body like um, Tommy Cash is when he's going to marry that woman at the end. There's something absolutely perverse about it, um, and it's. Um, I would say that the the use of these fat women here, there's the fat man too, but it doesn't read quite the same way. The use of the fat women here is really fat phobic, um, um, as these things usually are. Great. Um, more questions. Oh, okay. From Josh. Uh, has the Skibidi Challenge shown up on TikTok? And could you say a little bit generally about whether TikTok is being picked up in Russia? It has shown up on TikTok. I must admit, I am um, not all that up on TikTok. I, it, it takes a lot to make me actually invest myself in yet another platform. Um, and I think, and this is going to just sound, I think I was just sort of hoping that TikTok would die like Vine, so I wouldn't have to know as much about it. Um, so I'm not, I'm actually just not aware of how much TikTok has taken on the run and has taken off in Russia. And I'm sure there are plenty of people here um, who would be able to answer that one better. Okay, any more, more questions? I have a question. <clears throat> sure, Jane, go ahead. Okay, uh, so this is a very naive question. Very naive question. But, um, so who watches this? <laughs> <laughs> I know you have the numbers for how many views and so on. But is there any way of thinking about the social uh, uh, reception of, of uh, this group or others like it? Right, who watches it? Um, so I don't have data on it. I mean, I, I think if you go back to Spasiba Yeva and, and, and Click Clack and all that, I would, um, I, in a sense, for, I, in my head, I imagine the user based on what I'm watching, mm -hmm. um, which is um, skewing younger, um, obviously more online um, with, a, with a hip sense of irony. Um, and that's really all I've got. I don't really know um, who watches. I've seen videos from the concerts, the concerts, the people at the concerts are what you'd expect to see. A lot of, a lot of young, fairly hip people um, at the concerts. I don't think that really um, tells you very much, but I don't, I, don't have, I don't really have demographics. I am sure that Eurovision would have, and maybe to some extent already has, um, brought more attention to them to a larger public that might not have been paying attention to this sort of stuff before. Um, but the real breakthrough was Skibbity, right? Because the thing with, with Skibbity is you don't have to actually follow all of their work or even like all of their work to get into this sort of Gangnam style Macarena like thing, right? Um, that just becomes fun. And a lot, I assume most of the people who were into Skibbity did not then turn around and become little big um, fans. They just were doing Skibbity. And that, though, the thing about that that, um, that does suggest that um, my generalization about hip young people might be wrong is, at, as often happens with those sort of dance challenges and all that, the most fun videos are of people who don't look like the people you'd expect yeah. to do them. Um, the old ladies dancing to it. Because there's always going to be some people who don't fit the, the demographic who are involved in it. Um, and they can often be the most fun. And, and Tanya says TikTok is very big with Generation Z in Russia. The millennials too. Um, I assumed this, that would make sense. All right. Uh, yeah, and we had another comment 
a team confirmed that there are a lot of Russian TikToks. Yes. And I can also confirm as well. I will say that without shame that I have seen quite a few Russian TikToks. Um, <laughs> a comment from Joseph, uh, a quick comment on this is Russia. That phrase is how the comedian Bert Kreisch, Kreischer uh, ends his bit, The Machine. I know that he is quite popular online, so some of those memes that's might good. stem from that. Oh, that's good to know. Okay, thank you. And then we also have a question from Holly. Uh, which American groups do you see influencing Little Big? American groups. I don't know about influence. I mean, everybody, basically everybody compares them to De Antwoord. Um, I don't know how many of you know De Antwoord, the South African group, and they are, have a great deal in common with them. Um, because of my generation and because of my lack of involvement in um, a lot of contemporary music from the past like three decades, um, what in spirit, what they actually remind me of most is um, B-52s. Um, because the B-52s, if you can picture the B-52s um, and the beehive, um, the beehive hair that one of them has, um, they're, they're, performing, they're performing an unhipness that becomes, that becomes hip by how unhip it is. Um, and, B50, and when you're watching a B-52 video or watching B-52 perform, it's not just, as with here, I think, it's not just listening to the music or just seeing them in front of you. It's um, connecting with a whole attitude. Um, and um, the fact that they embody an attitude or a set of attitudes um, and also have that sort of playfulness, that's what it reminds me of. But again, since I'm old, um, I think there are people here who uh, would have a better sense of what um, English language acts um, might have more in common with them. And I sent a link to a Wikipedia article for D. Antwerp for uh -huh. everyone who wants to yeah. know who that is. Um, also, David, uh, David Goldfarb has his hand up, so I can unmute you now, David. Thanks. Let, let me know if it's too noisy. I'm on my balcony. Uh, but uh, and I can write out my question. But I'm wondering, this is outside of my territory, but uh, is there a Bollywood thing going on here? That whole kind of over the top aesthetic. Also, there's there's an, a Tamil game called Kabidi, which uh, appears in Bollywood movies. And I'm wondering if that, you know, that had it's a sport and if that, you know, may have kind of flowed into Skibidi. Oh, interesting. I don't know. Um, Skibidi, Skibidi, the thing about Skibidi that, that surprises me, and I've never looked at where they got it from, it sounds so 1950s American to me um, as, as a word. Um, so yeah. I don't know where that comes from. Bollywood, definitely. I mean, not so much. I, I, I can't point to specific moments in those videos that I've seen. So, well, this is definitely Bollywood. Um, but that over-the-top aesthetic that, um, that, the, that Soviet audiences absolutely adored. Um, and, can, and many continue to, um, I think has a lot in common with, um, with this and with a sort of kind of Europop um, music as well um, that um, does, is not concerned with restraint at all. Yeah. yeah. All right, and uh, we have a question from Dennis Brown. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks, Elliot. It's an interesting trajectory from Kova and to videos that could never be shown on Putin's state TV after the mid-2000s to Eurovision. Uh, <laughs> is the Russian Eurovision team still a Filip Kirkorov project? Are little big fans disappointed with LV? Oh, good question. And I should have investigated that. I mean, what I've seen is these videos are, these videos are, are highly watched online. Um, and, this is, and what I should look into, um, and now I think I will look into is, um, are we at that moment that I think we're all familiar with um, in say a music fan of, oh, I liked them until they got popular. Um, if, if there is going to be an I like them until they got popular moment for a little big, I'm sure this is it. Um, but I don't know if that sort of, um, if that sort of stuff has, um, has come up. Because another way of looking at it is by Little Big standards, actually, I, th I still love those two videos. They're silly, but I still really enjoy them. By Little Big standards, these things are superficially um, simpler and they're much less um, in your face. But by Eurovision standards, this, this to me is so much better than any Russian Eurovision entry I've seen in years. And I do try to pay attention to what they're um, putting in Eurovision. And like most Russian pop music, I usually hate it. Um, so, um, 
so it's a question of like what you're comparing to. But I could, but I would, I, there must be little big fans out there who feel betrayed. And I assume there must be little big fans who feel like it's just not little big without Olympia anymore. Um, so, yeah. What, oh, what does the fox say? Yeah. Um, Joseph was, point, was, was um, comparing this to, I'd forgotten about what does the fox say? That very, very catchy thing that came from a, ooh, which Scandinavian country? I always get them wrong and then feel like an idiot. Um, one Scandinavian country's um, uh, comedy show um, that I can't remember and I will not try to name. Uh, Dennis Brown says they're from Norway. Thank you. I had like one out of three chance, but um, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, uh, we had a comment from Katya. I think one can also see the influence of Russian folk dance and the way men move there, often almost not moving their upper bodies, so just their legs do the dance. Oh, totally. But I, I think the influence of Russian folk dance here is part of the parody. Um, because, um, well, certainly in, in that first video of, of um, uh, the, the first video about this is Russia, I can't, um, I can't now, I do, every day I'm drinking, um, in, their, in their attempts to be um, recognizably Russian, the dancing is like the folk dancing. Um, but otherwise, yeah, um, it's, it does seem to have, um, have um, something in common with that. I think also um, there's a deliberate silliness to it um, in terms of like what, what they're doing with their legs. But yeah, there's, there's folk traditions too. And a question from Catherine. Uh, I wanted to ask about internet memes and music videos in general. Is it something that comes out of the fact that we all watch music videos online instead of on television and music videos themselves are an internet phenomenon? I'm thinking of how music videos often look like a series of scenes that can be easily made into GIFs. Absolutely. I mean, I think what you're getting at is a really common aesthetic that was much more noticeable or more obvious to me when, when at the beginning of music videos when they started to come out. I mean, one of the things that really strikes me about the little big videos is actually how, in some ways, they're less like a series of GIFs um, than others. Because in the early days of, um, of music videos in the 80s, um, I remember that, you know, this is a big uh, um, generalization, but there were largely two different types of music videos. One which would try to take the song and turn it into a story and then connect what's happening in front of you with what's happening in the lyrics of the song. And those were the, often the least successful and the, and, um, and the least popular. Where music videos seemed to go more productively was to um, have what's happening in the video be only possibly tangentially related to what's happening in the song, not have them be illustrations to the song, but be their own thing playing with the song as a counterpoint. So there you get a whole series of images. To, again, this is because of my age. To me, the, the prime example is um, Eurythmic Sweet Dreams Are Made Of This, which is just like one surreal image after another surreal image. And the whole thing is this collection of these images. Now you, have a, you certainly have that sort of thing in the early um, in the early little big videos um, because there's so much rough cut editing. Um, and, that, and, and that fits in with how I think you're right. In general videos, um, the, the aesthetic of videos does fit in very well with making GIFs and then, then making memes. But what's happening with these later videos, or at least with, with um, No Dancer and a few others that I didn't show you, um, is going very much in the direction of actually having a story. Um, now what's interesting with Hypno Dancer is I think that works because the song itself does not have a story. The song itself is inane. Um, and there's really nothing to do with the lyrics of Hypno Dancer. But then to turn it into this kind of um, Ocean's Eleven scam um, is rather inspired. Okay. Um, and we have a, a comment from Peter. Uh, it's a, a link to the 2016 Eurovision spoof um, mm -hmm. from comedians, not sure which country they're from, uh, that put together the recipe for the perfect Eurovision performance. Love, peace, memorable costumes, and some strange old folkloristic instrument. Oh, that's great. That is great. I yeah, wish, I, 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 still, I still have not figured out how to save everything from the chat and have it later. Um, so if you could send me that link, that would be really great. I'd love to see it. Um, and a comment from Anya. Not, I'm not seeing any intrinsic contradiction between Filip Kirkorov and Little Big as Eurovision entries, or Sirduchka for that matter. <laughs> as I think they all come out of Boney M, like out of Gogol's overcoat. Oh, interesting. 
Yeah, no, I could see that. Um, maybe it's my own prejudices about how much I hate Kirchhoff. Um, but see, the Jewish guy, yeah, they're, 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 it, it would be a bit closer. So maybe I've been a bit harsh about the Eurovision entries or a bit kind about the little big entry. Um, and I think I'm coming, I might be coming to it already liking Little Big, which is not how I come to any Eurovision video normally. So, um, so this could very well be my prejudices. Yeah, but you're right about the certainly Vera Sirduchka and Ikir Kodov. I can still think of the Stilp though. All right. Uh, oh. oh, and from Dennis Brown, Rambo Amadeus from Montenegro too. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dennis. If you could send me an email, that would be great. I'm still stuck with trying to get the stuff out of the chat. Yeah. All right, and any other questions or raised hands? Okay. Well then, uh, thanks to everybody for sticking with us. This is, and thanks for Elliot for the slightly longer lecture than normal. Not only getting longer in terms of the numbers, but the time, but no, it was totally fascinating. Getting to see all the videos was fantastic, but thank you so much, Elliot, for sharing with us. Thanks all of you for sticking around today. And especially a huge thanks to Sasha for organizing and making these things run uh, so smoothly. She should be moderating, I think, every online <laughs> video uh, lecture series we've got going here at you. Anyway, we really appreciate it. And we'll see you all, uh, hope to see you all next week.